Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and I'm out walking the big guy. And I had a discovery yesterday that GData was not supported on Python 3 and the attempts to fork it by the Google Code community uh, have it has its own problems and it's more important for me to stay on Python 3 than it is to stay compatible with uh, GData. And so I went looking for alternatives and found something called GSpread, which is a GitHub project which works with Python 3 and does not require the Google client libraries. Now for anyone who's actually learning programming from following my series, it's time to say a couple of words about client libraries. You'll hear them referred to all the time and they're not necessary. Client libraries are a bunch of files that whatever service provider you're using makes available for you so that using their services as a programmer is easier. They give you a whole bunch of simplified API calls and when I say API it's application programming interface, it's how you write the code. So when you sit down to write the code things can be either enormously complex and sometimes working at a low level where you're dealing with things that make the HTTP calls themselves or essentially you know load the web pages or you're dealing things with things at a much more abstract level where you just say you know log me in get me this data and you don't even have to think in terms of you know network protocols and you know forming requests from XML or, or JSON and again I might be throwing out some some jargon here but basically client libraries make it easier to code against things like Google Spreadsheets and when you don't get those client libraries you can still code against Google Spreadsheets you just have to do it the hard way so that provides a nice big opening for people who want to make great github projects or share the work they've done uh, you know so that's where gspread came from someone had to interact with Google spreadsheets had probably the same frustration with the G data as I had and said hey not only can I do this same work without G data I can create a much better API so it's easier for people to do projects like this and the question then becomes do I use this is it going to be supported forever? Well, forever support doesn't really matter in a case like this because Google Spreadsheets itself is going to change over time and it's being positioned as a optional part of the project. I presume that someday there's going to be a spreadsheet-like environment with a nice uh, API uh, like Google Spreadsheets other than Google Spreadsheets, at which time I'll switch it. And I have, in fact, looked for those over the years. And I think Zoho, is that the one? You know, there's things that come close here and there. Uh, even Microsoft Excel could kind of sort of be it if uh, you didn't need that whopping big, uh, uh, what is it, SharePoint server in order to, you know, make the connections. So Google Spreadsheets is really so appealing because the web API, despite all the problems with GData, the web API makes doing neat tricks with spreadsheets over the web easy. And so, you know, it's actually quite unique in the amount of granular control it provides over everything having to do with a spreadsheet except formatting. And for formatting, there's another environment, which brings up another issue, since I might as well keep going and explaining the reasons and approach for the Gropy project. The uh, other programming environment that's actually built directly into uh, Google Spreadsheets and all the other uh, Google Docs products is called AppScript, Google AppScript. It's JavaScript and it can let you do formatting of the spreadsheet. 
and probably most of the other rudimentary things that I need to do, and it is indeed very tempting. Now, the problem here, the reason I'm not choosing it, is because once again, my app would become tightly coupled to Google Spreadsheets. It would not be extractable because the code was running in Google Spreadsheets. And um, the architecturally, what I'm doing is I'm taking all the brains, all the smarts of the Gropy application and moving it out onto a server you control, in this case the Raspberry Pi, but you know, cloud server, whatever, any server you control, where you can put in any customizations you want, custom code, expand the system, use the full power of Python, and not be limited by any Google decisions. There's no quotas, there's no, you know, maximum iterations you can do in a loop. Um, there's no limitations on what sites you can, uh, you can reach out to and hit. There's no limitation on what additional local client libraries you can install. Um, these are the things you can do when you control your own server that you can't necessarily do when you're using Google App Script. Um, it's the, the, where does the code execute when you're using Google App Script? Well, it turns out that the code is actually executing on a similar thing as Google App Engine and all their other large virtual server services. Um, they have enormous infrastructure just like Amazon does with Amazon Web Services. Um, and uh, they use it for a bunch of different things and one of those things is, uh, is App Script. But that means it's got all those same rules and limitations and you know, you don't get unlimited code execution uh, ability either in terms of availability or in terms of uh, various things you can do, capabilities. So, um, what else? What else? Yeah, so I'm a little busier today than I thought I was going to be, so I won't be picking up where I left off, probably not today. You won't see any videos from me today, which is a bummer. I'm at a really exciting point, uh, that aha moment of executing a little piece of code and seeing Google Spreadsheets, you know, work. Well, uh, this is a huge accelerator on the project though, any way you slice it. Even without using uh, Google Spreadsheets as its, you know, as a required piece, it helps in development because cycles become faster, setting up sample data becomes faster. Uh, trying variations becomes faster. I don't even have to edit a text file for my sample data pretty soon. Um, but I do need to rethink the data structures of a row because that whole row is a dictionary thing is a GData API convention, which I'm not using anymore. So it appears that GSpread only has the concept of tables and cells. It has select row, so you can get a whole row back. It has, I believe, insert row, so you can pop a whole row in, but it doesn't have update row, which is very much what my system is based on. But you can get a cell range, and if you define the cell range as a row using its indexes, I believe I might be able to do a batch cell update to cut down network traffic so that I can still conceptually be processing a row at a time. Um, so that's my plan. When next I sit down, I will be figuring out the data structures I need and figuring out actual row at a time processing, whether it's coming from uh, a, uh, a shelf object or Google Spreadsheets. And that'll be a, a big step forward in the development of the project. Then I'll only need to execute the functions and, and do the updates and it'll become useful for uh, SEO position tracking, social media um, view and share and 
like and plus one counts and all that stuff. So um, join me soon and thanks for listening and don't forget to share the video and subscribe.